everyone. Welcome back. We're continuing to make this ball jointed doll. <laughs> yes, we're coming along. So we've got all our different parts here. We I put all the legs together, the hands and feet and everything go with each little little pile, the head, the body, etc. Everything's kind of ready. We just need to prepare the joints. So what we've got to do now is open up the joints to allow thread the elastic thread to get through. So this is going to have to be opened up uh, to match the shoulder joint. And that's going to be part of our process, but also we've got to carve some grooves into the actual uh, ball of the joint as well. So the thing with this is going to be making the opening the same size as the ball joint because that's going to make it so that the joint will move smoothly and you won't have any problems with that after you have you know completely finished everything so it's important for the step that you take the time to make sure that all the joints fit well together because we still have the process of putting the coating on all of this so it's a certain thickness now but after we put the coating on it's going to be just a little bit thicker so we have to kind of keep all that in mind. But the coating will make everything smooth and more like porcelain. Uh, should, you know, make everything move smoothly together also. But that's for another video. So right now I'm just opening up that uh, hole. Uh, once you get it a certain amount opening, you have to be careful not to go up too high. You want to uh, continue carving down in the underneath arm area to make it a little bit bigger. Now I did realize uh, as I was doing this that I needed to add a little bit of clay to the top of the uh, shoulder. I just didn't have enough, uh, I guess the extension of the shoulder was not proper so I couldn't get the joint to move properly. So I did have to add some clay up on top of the shoulders to make that work properly. but. Yeah, these are the parts that you want to get out of the way before you start any finishing touches because it's going to be impossible to do that after you have uh, put the gofun on. Gofun is the coating that we're going to be using, which is a traditional Japanese coating made out of oyster shells and shellfish shells. So I'll tell you about that in another video, but basically what I'm doing now, I'm just kind of going back and forth, looking at the shape. You can see that shoulders kind of look like they're angled too close to the neck, so I had to add a little bit eventually to that. Uh, also, the ball of the joint was too big, and I had a lot of drama with that. <laughs> and you see how this doll's arm moves really easily. It, it just, the ball collapses into the opening well, um, and you know that's what we're we're hoping to achieve with this doll uh, if you look in the book it shows you how this lines up and how you kind of cut off part of the uh, shoulder of the arm and add the ball to it and so this is kind of the process I'm going through here basically just trying to measure the arm hole and see how different it is from the size of the ball and I can use the process uh, that I've used before to make the ball a little bit smaller, which is to soak the ball in some water to, to get the clay to uh, soften up, and then just rolling it around in this circle template. And it just takes off a thin layer and also makes it nice and round and smooth so you have a nice round joint. So this is the process that I'm using to try to get this to fit. Uh, one of the things you have to be careful about is this is a hollow ball. It had the styrofoam in it, remember, and we pulled that out. Um, so you can only take off so much and you start getting down to the opening. And guess what? That happened on the other arm. Not this arm, but the other arm. I won't show you that because that was that was a lot of drama. There were things being thrown. Curses were made. Anyway, <laughs> You just get this and try to fine tune it. You don't want to have to take off too much or you're going to have a really big problem. But um, with the other arm, I actually had to take the ball off and start over. I had to put a, a completely new ball on because it was just too big. And when I started 
trying to make it smaller, I actually opened it up and had a big hole in the arm. So, um, yeah, just keep in mind you have a certain thickness here to work with and you should only be taking off a small amount. If you have to take off too much, your ball is just too big in the beginning and you probably needed to just start over. So, um, I would say that this was probably something that maybe I could have figured out in the beginning before I before I even put the ball on but I was I wasn't really thinking about it that much at that point I was uh, really I was more concerned with the fact that I could only get a certain size of the little styrofoam balls and that sort of limited me on the size of balls that I could make to wrap the, the clay around but uh, let's just say that I moved on I I sort of got everything fixed and so now I'm going to just work on the legs. I didn't want to show you all that, that drama. But uh, keeping in mind you just want to have the, the ball fit into the opening and if you have to add on to the shoulders you have to add on. So here here the important thing is that you want to draw a cross hatch to make sure that you're putting the main opening of the thigh joint in the middle. You don't want it to be off side, it will make the leg move improperly. So you just do a cross hatch to put uh, uh, the middle up at the top. And then I started a hole with the tip of the exacto, which is very sharp. And then I'm using drill bits. Uh, this is a good way to do this so that you don't crack the clay. So you can use progressive sizes of the drill bits to make the hole bigger and bigger until you get it the size you want. And uh, it's a little bit more precise than trying to do that with the X-Acto. Um, now, the next step is I'm putting little indentions with the X-Acto all along that line that I have to carve out. And then I'm going to drill holes all along that. And that's going to make it easier for me to carve the slot out. So I'm just making a line of holes from the big hole down to the base of the joint and once I get all of those done then it's going to be easier for me. You can see I have all the little holes there. Now it's just a matter of opening up the slot with the exacto and carving out the sides and making them smooth so that the elastic will run in, in between the grooves properly. So uh, you should already have some of the elastic available because you want to measure to make sure as you're doing this that the elastic size that you have will fit in the holes and slots that we're making. I also have, uh, this was actually a piece of a foam emery board that I cut off just the sanding paper part and folded uh, so I'd have a really thin piece of sandpaper that's fairly fine grit and I can run that into the uh, groove there and sand it to make it smooth. And you have, so the top of it, it has a, a actual round hole uh, that's going to allow the elastic to sort of grip in that area to keep the doll upright but then it will also be able to move as we uh, make the leg move. So now we're going back to the shoulder joint. I had to do a little work and let the clay dry, so uh, that's why the, that uh, foray into the, the thigh <laughs> joint happened. But at this point, I have added some to the shoulders. You can see there's a little bit more real estate up there. Uh, it's not quite so angled up towards the neck. And at this point now, I'm going to make a mark with the pencil. I don't want my groove uh, of the opening to go past that so that when it fits against the arm you won't see the groove and then uh, you're, you're gonna again have a hole sort of in the middle of the ball and then a groove up to that pencil mark that I made and that will allow the arm to extend in the joint and again the same process just uh, using the exacto to make a starting point in the clay and then using the drill bits to make the graduated hole opening if needed. I think here I actually just used the exacto because the hole here needed to be a little bit bigger. Um, 
so for this one I actually just used the exacto and ran it around the edges to make the hole for the inside of this joint but then I am making a slice up to that pencil mark and here I've got my elastic thread that I'm going to be using it's pretty strong uh, but I want to make sure that this will move properly in that slot and for this it's the slot needs to be a little bit wider so just take your time and just slowly carve the sides up a little bit and once you get it pretty much where you want then you can use the sandpaper to smooth it and open up just a tiny bit more that doesn't do a lot you want to do most of the work with the exacto but you do want to get it to the point that this thread can move easily in the slot otherwise your jaw your doll will not be able to bend so a lot of things you want to have on hand <laughs> when you're doing this the exactos the sandpaper or the elastic thread clay you got to have all this on hand because you're going to be using these back and forth even the clay we're going to continue to use now the hand and the feet this is a little different because we're going to have to put a metal pin in this and then a metal s uh connector to attach the elastic to because this will be the end of the elastic in the arm and then the foot is the end of the elastic so for that you have to have this s hook so we have we're going to have a slot that goes all the way across the middle top of this ball joint for the hand and I was really sweating this I thought this is going to crack I, I, I just couldn't imagine that I was going to be able to carve this slot out and it not crack because it's such a small little tiny piece of clay but I guess this stuff is pretty tough because I did not break it yay so uh, I just was slowly working on it and as I did this I came up with other ways to to make the groove and I'll show you that a little bit later but um, what I was doing here was I was just kind of slicing down one side with the exacto and then down the other side almost in a V shape to remove clay until I could get it open enough uh, that that I could you know get the sandpaper or whatever in there um, I was thinking I would try using the coping saw, but this was such a tiny piece of clay that I was just afraid that I was going to crack it. Um, but here I'm just cleaning out the debris and uh, using that clay tool that I have, the pointy one that I use a lot. So these are the S hooks, and you can buy these at hardware store or Amazon. These are real small ones. So you're going to have a, hook, a, a rounded part on two sides. And then we're going to have to put a uh, pin through the side of this ball in the wrist for that to attach to. Now, um, one of the things you want to keep in mind is that you want the pin to be in the middle, so you have to have enough depth for that to fit into. And you also want to make sure that the slot is wide enough for the metal uh, S hook to fit into. So just keep measuring seeing if it will fit in there and then it will be you know be able to move easily that will allow the wrist to move and um, make sure it's deep enough so that if you put a pin through the middle of the joint and I'm marking that now I'm just putting a, a mark dot right in the middle of the, that ball and that's where I'm going to put the pin so you have to have enough depth for the uh, S hook to go around the pin underneath it so um, here I'm going to use uh, the exacto to make a little indention and you don't want to press too hard because you got a real thin piece of clay here. <laughs> so just get a little hole started that your built drill bit can fit into and then let the drill bit do the work uh, so you don't have to press it too hard. So I'm using this little tiny handheld drill that I've used before in this project. Uh, this has some really tiny bits. <laughs> And uh, I use it a lot with doll work. And you can get this on Amazon if you need one. I'm probably at a hardware store. So we're just going to start with a really small bit and just get our hole in there. And then we'll decide if we need to make it any further. So I went all the way through without breaking it. Yay! And then uh, cleaning out the debris 
in the slot. Now we're going to try to put a pin through. Now I want to use the same metal uh, that I use for the, or that is the S uh, hooks are made out of because it's really thick and sturdy and uh, won't bend. So what I'm going to do is take my pliers and open up one of the S hooks to get a straight piece. And then I'll just cut off the uh, parts that I don't need on either end. But I think this will make it the most sturdy. I have some other wire, but it's not quite this thick. And I think this is also stainless steel. So um, that's nice because if it started rusting, it would come through the clay. <laughs> that's really some things you have to think about. All right, so I got my straight piece here, and I'm just going to slowly inch it into that hole to uh, make sure I don't break the clay. And yay, it actually went through. So I don't have to really open that hole up uh, too much. Just going to uh, use the side of the drill to make the uh, slit a little bit deeper. So that was another thing I, I found, that that worked pretty well. So you can just uh, take a drill bit and run it back and forth because it has those ridges and that will deepen the uh, the depth it will make that a deeper slash in the in the wrist joint once you get everything done and we stick that pin in and we're gonna hook the s hook around it and then you want to close off the s hook so that it won't slip off because we'll be messing with this a lot and if it slips off it'll be a pain in the butt to get it back on so we got it on there and then you can just pinch the um the edges together to close off that bottom part. We'll leave the, op the upper part open. This one had a slightly smaller op uh, S, it, the, like one side was a little bit smaller than the other. So I put the small side on the wrist and then we'll put the bigger sides up into the arm since it's got a little bit bigger opening. So what we want to do now is we want to have the pin flush on either side of the ball joint. So, so we can put some clay over it and that will hide it and also secure it in place. So um, I'm just going to uh, cut off the, make sure that you know it's enough in there that it's going side to side though. You don't want to have that fall out because you didn't have enough. But then you're going to just get a little ball of clays on either side and smooth it out. You don't want to put too much because remember this joint is made to fit into the uh, the arm, the lower part of the arm, and if you put too much, it's not going to fit. Now we're going to basically use the same process with the foot for the ankle joint. We're going to make a slot that goes all the way across the top from the front of the foot to the heel of the foot on the joint. And this just helps you keep, keep it straight. If you get it crooked, then the doll's foot will move crooked. <laughs> So I'm um, just going to start by uh, making a little groove with the X-Acto, but I decided that uh, that technique I had of using the drill bit worked really well on the, on the hand, so I uh, decided that that would probably be a lot faster and easier process. Uh, once you get a groove started, then you could use the drill bit, the side of the drill bit, and that works well. And actually, uh, I ended up using the coping saw on the neck, and I'll show you that, but I don't know. At this point, I was just so afraid I was going to crack the clay if I used that. But it's actually, the width of that coping saw blade is about the right width for this elastic. So it actually probably would have been a good option, at least on the feet, which is a little bit bigger ball. Maybe not on the hands. I don't know. That, that was a tiny little ball. But same here, you're just trying to make sure you have deep enough that you can put the S hook in and get a pin through it. And the pin needs to be in the middle of the ball. You don't want the pin to be too close up to the top. It will be too much, too thin a piece of clay holding it down. So um, we're at the point now, I'm just using my little thin piece of sandpaper and making sure that this is nice and smooth and you want to also run the elastic through it to make sure the, I mean the uh, S-pin through it to make sure that the uh, movement is is smooth. You don't want it to be too tight or it won't move.
properly. All right, so now I'm just putting a drill bit through the side there where, where, where the pin will go. And once again, I'm just going to open up a, one of those S hooks and use that as my pin. Same process here. We're going to stick it in. We're going to put the S hook around it. We're going to close off the bottom part of the S hook. And then we'll put some clay on either side after we cut the wire flush on each side of the, of the ankle joint. I have found that having long fingernails and doing this made things a whole lot more difficult <laughs> for many reasons. One, when I'm trying to handle little small places like this and also when I'm working with the clay I had indentions of my nails also you don't want to wear jewelry when you're working with clay because that will indent like uh, if you have rings or whatever so lots of things to learn so here I'm just putting a little block blob of clay on either side after I've cut the pin wire and then we'll just mold that around the ankle and Again, you don't want it to be too thick because that was already molded to fit up into the lower part of the leg. And to adding too much it will make it not fit. I'm sure I'll have to do some sanding when it gets to the point of getting ready to put the coating on. But at this point, you just want to get everything fixed, all the joints ready. And then we can work on the fine tuning. Now, last thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting a slot in the neck. So again, we just want to mark in the center, front to back, so we make sure we get the slot in the middle and some and have symmetrical clay on either side so the head will move properly. Now here I actually uh, started with the exacto, and then I thought, hmm, Maybe I should just try the the coping saw. I mean, I've already taken this neck ball off once. I could do it again if I break it, right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So I just started with the with the drill bit, and then I'm like, heck, let's just use the coping saw. So I did switch over, and it worked perfectly. It sawed right into it, and it actually was just the right width. Uh, I just had to do a little bit of carving to open it up with exacto and shaping it and then uh, sanding it a little bit and then it worked perfectly so coping saw will work just go slow don't force it and I don't think it will crack I'm pretty impressed with the strength of this clay it's really holding up well even these little small areas so happy about that uh, again you want to just measure your uh, elastic thread in there to make sure that it will move smoothly and this looks pretty good yeah so we got that done now the only thing left is the uh, knee I forgot about this yeah we got to do the knee joint so we got uh, the leg here the upper and lower leg and that's gonna need a slot that allows the elastic to go down the back part of the ball so we'll have uh, an opening up at the top in the middle and then a slot going down to the back of the knee so I'm eyeballing this you really should probably make the hatch marks so you get it right in the middle but I think I was getting tired this whole process of the joints you know I'm, I'm condensing it down into a small little video here but this was over weeks of work because uh, you know I did have to do some additional clay work I and mean, every time you do the clay work you have to wait and let it dry the next day so taking about a little over probably two weeks maybe close to video and condensing it down into about 25 30 minutes for you guys so it's not so super boring but I think I was getting tired at this point I was like ready to move on to the next part of, of making the doll so this is kind of the end here there's the um, knee joint uh, similar to the hip joint with the little ball uh, circle in the middle and then the slot down the back we got the foot we got the hands we got the neck 
and um, the next part I think is putting the 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 coating on the outside of all the clay pieces so stay tuned for that that's pretty much the end of this video thanks for staying with me I'm glad you're here please subscribe and like this video it really does help appreciate it see you soon